Welcome back to Maverick Truth Radio. How's everybody doing today? So we are going to have a few interviews. We're going to talk about college survival tips as why Evan came up for our title today. It's the longest title I think I've ever had on the show, but it's going to be one of the most interesting episodes that we've had so far. So today we are talking about college survival tips, sharing the gospel. What, how do you share the gospel to this dying world in this world that seemingly is getting more and more harsh and more and more aggressive against the gospel? So on today we have Evan Popowski to my far right in the SCSU Jackrabbit sweat t-shirt. And then we have Mr. Michael Popowski in the middle, the guy in the middle. So I don't think he's got to raise his hand or do anything because everybody knows he's in the middle. But he didn't want to be in the middle today, but he is in the middle. And these guys might be a little camera shy today, but that is going to be all right because you guys are not going to destroy him in the comments. Okay? Is everybody fine with that? No, they'll be just perfectly fine. I'm not worried at all. Just got to make sure. Yep, nothing actually frozen this time. And I hope the audio is sounding good. It should be good, but... um. Any updates? There's nothing really any updates this week, but we'll do them always at the end as usual. But Evan is going to start by reading our passage today, what we're going to springboard from, and I think Michael is also going to read. But we'll read the passages, and then we will talk and have our speakers introduce themselves. All right, Evan, you can read. All right, so I will be reading from Mark 8, starting in verse 34. And calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? For what can a man give in return for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Again, that was Mark 8, 34. All right, that was 34, I think, through 38. But yes, absolutely, Mark 8. So if you want to flip your Bibles over there, we'll kind of go through that text a little bit. I don't have a Bible right in front of me. Evan's using mine, but Michael is going to be a Gen Zer and read off the phone. Uh, I will be reading Romans 12, 1 through 2. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to protect your bodies, to present your bodies, my bad, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual wordship. To not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. All right, so we have our text for today, and we are going to just kind of go through that maybe just a little bit. We're not going to go really phrase by phrase, verse by verse, because this is not our usual Bible study time. But first off, Evan, would you introduce yourself of what, who you are, what you're doing, what are your plans in life, what is your goals in life, and you know, are you going to profit the world or are you going to profit eternal life? I don't know. Um, I'm just teasing them a little bit, but... It is important, you know, Mark 8, 36, for what will profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul. And I know, without a shadow of a doubt, with talking to these two guys and they're being my friends and stuff, I know that they're biblically grounded. And that's why I kind of wanted to have them on the show today is because you don't see that much anymore. You see people that are chasing every single thing and every single whim. And I got to stop talking and let my inner um, guests talk a little bit. So, Evan, what do you going to introduce? All right, everybody. So I'm Evan Popowski. I'm currently a freshman, although you could technically consider it a sophomore at South Dakota State University in Brookings, South Dakota. And I currently am studying natural resources law enforcement with the future aspirations of being a either a game warden or conservation officer, depending on the location that I end up. All right, so with that, you, if you know Evan and you're friends with Evan, don't take him hunting with you anymore because you never want to take a game warden with you. Um, I'm sorry, Evan. But, Michael, would you introduce yourself? Uh, like Caleb said, my name is Michael Popowski. Um, I am a first-year student at Lake Area Technical College in Watertown, South Dakota, and um, I am going for building trades technology. So that's like carpentry work. So we'll be building houses. So if you 
need someone to maybe build your house, I might be that future guy. He might be the future guy. He will be the future guy. We got to get that straight. All right, so um, I kind of knew Evan and Michael for like, what, the past two years, something like that. Something like that. Yeah, something like that once we started attending the same church that they, they've been going to for a very long time. Um, eventually, I will have my dad and possibly Tim Papowski, hopefully Tim Papowski, on the show, and they will also introduce themselves. That would be my dad, and that would be Evan and Michael's dad. But Evan and Michael are right around, what, 19, 20 years of age? They're 19. 19 years of 20 age. 20 in August. 20 in August. They have the same birthday, if you can't tell yet. Um, Michael is just a little bit older than Evan, but that little bit is all that matters. Um, but... You know, once they get to 50 and 60, it'll change the tune, and Evan will be saying, well, you're just a little bit older. You're a little bit closer to the grave than I am. It'll change the tune eventually, but that's all that matters. All right, so we'll be talking about, so what about sharing the gospel in places? I mean, how do you go about doing that? This last week, I had this opportunity to share this the gospel very clear, very cut and dry to a kid in my class. I was very pleased to actually do so. Um but, you know, you know, I was really just praying. God I was like, open up, up a opportunity that hits me square in the face so that I don't actually turn and go a different direction. But, you know, I, um, he started asking me questions, and I just started telling him straight what the gospel is. Romans 10, 9, 10. I told him, you know, Romans 6, 23, I believe, and Romans 3, 23, all those things. I told him confirmation don't save you. Baptism don't save you. Um, but, yeah. It is important to share the gospel, and it is important to live the gospel more than it is to even share the gospel. It is. It is very important. And, you know, very quickly, Michael and Evan, what, why is it crucial to live the gospel? And one of you guys can start that. Well, it's crucial to live the gospel because if you ain't doing it, you're obviously disobeying the word of God straight off the bat. And how are you supposed to be a witness to other individuals who don't know Jesus Christ is their own personal Savior. If you're not living it out, if you're not living by an example, there's no way you can teach that example. Yes, people are very watchful, and they, they like to watch people. And if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, if you're not living a godly life, they're not going to even want to be interested in what you have to say. Absolutely. That is one of the things that we notice today is that the fact is many people claim with the mouth that they're a Christian. They claim with their mouth that the gospel, but yet their life says otherwise. And that is our, the main problem in American Christianity and the American church is if you say something and look completely different, that is why many people from the world look in and say, I don't want anything to do with that. Very that, true. Yeah, very true. And so we have been, you know, we've been attending, you know, Bible study, young adult Bible study up there. Um, and we just, you know, that is... You know, living out the gospel, and Michael has invited one of his friends to go to that um, Bible study, which is, you know, um, I've been able to talk with him a little bit. Michael's been able to talk to him, but Evan's also been coming to that Bible study. Um, and Evan has also been, he invited a few of his buddies to church at one time. I wasn't able to be there, but you want to talk anything, guys, about any of that or not? Or? I'm sure I'll talk, yeah. Like as Caleb said, I invited one of my classmates to go to Bible study. There was two Bible studies a week, and I had saw him one day at this one on Thursday night, and I'm like, hey, there, I might want to like talk a little bit more about this. And so I was talking to him one day, and I had told him about this Bible study that's at New Life Church in Watertown on Tuesday nights. And he does work Tuesday nights, but I suggested, you know, maybe see if you can get a day off and come. And he was able to get a day off, and he was able to make it there, and he he had an interest in what we were talking about. And afterwards, I was able to just see where you know what his background was, where he came from, and just kind of learn a little bit more about him and what his, kind of his interests were, and if he had like anything a reason why he did decided to come that night. And he said that. Uh, his family used to go to a church, but they weren't really able to find one when he was younger. And as I found out a few weeks later, he does, I believe he said that his grandpa was a pastor. So, you know, that is able to help it out a little bit. Yeah, but I was just able to talk to him and 
figure out like what all his his feelings were about everything and he's come for a few times now when each time I've been asking him like well what is this how do you feel about this today and it's been going pretty good so far so absolutely absolutely um so let's let's jump into our text just a little bit you want to hand me my bible so i can actually read the text in a little bit but um so in you know in mark 8 verses 34 it says i'm like i'll find it right here where 34 27 um 31 all right so we're done here so it says in the text, I'll just start right there, but turning and seeing the disciples, he rebuked them. Peter said, get behind me, Saint, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but the things of man. So Peter was rebuked right there by Jesus Christ. And he said, and calling to the crowd to him, his disciples, he said to them, if anyone come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. So the thing of it is, is that what is the fact there is that you are called to take up what? What do you guys? You're cross. called to take up your cross. cross. Yes. You're called to take up your cross and follow him. There is a change of direction that must take place. There's a change from going in one way because that, that's a, the thing of this world is that you can go with the flow. You can go with the current and the, the mouth of hell that you the gaps of hell or the doors of hell are wide open and many people are going in by it because Matthew 7, 13, 14 talks about that. Many people go in by the um, gates of hell. But as Christians, we are supposed to take up his cross and follow him. So we have a turn of direction, a turn of direction. So we're supposed to have a turn of direction from death to life. You guys want to t touch any bit of, on that from death to life, laying down the old man, following Jesus Christ. Is there anything you guys want to touch? Well, the the path is narrow and you got to if you're taking up your cross, it's not going to necessarily be easy by no means. And we're we're told that it wouldn't be easy. And Jesus was rejected and scorned and beaten. And he said, we're going to have the same the same experiences as we follow him through life so absolutely absolutely oh you want to touch anything and uh yeah like narrow path that means it's going to be difficult and not many people are going to be on that path because you know the other path is very wide and leads to destruction but if you if you stick to that narrow path you will have blessings in the end because you will not be going to hell you will be going to heaven if you are saved yes. and have accepted jesus christ into your life yeah absolutely Narrow is a way and wide is a gate that leads to destruction. There are many who are going by because narrow is a gate, difficult is a way which leads to life and purifying. So that is a fact of the Bible. That's a fact of Scripture is that many people are on the path to hell. Many people are on the path that are going to destruction. They're going to hell. They're going to spend eternity in eternal judgment. Many people are going down that way. And there are few people that are going to heaven. There's few people on the path that leads to righteousness. And what that is is the fact that your works do not save you. I want I want Michael or Evan to touch on that just a little bit if you'd like, or you want me to keep on going. Yeah, there's so many people who just believe that, oh, I'm I'm a good person. I do this. I you know I give. I'm generous with my finances. I like go to church. I read the Bible, although they completely misinterpret it because they're missing that point that they think that's going to get them to heaven by being good. And they just they're so indoctrinated they're studying 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 while they're letting it go right over the top of their head they're missing these key points that it's not your works it's not anything that you can show other people it's got to be it's a heart issue it's got to be a, a belief absolutely yep you know ephesians 2 8 9 is a group of bet one of the best texts for by grace you say through faith and that none of yourselves is not of works lest anyone should boast and then, you know, Evan's hitting it right on the head right there with Ezekiel 36, 26. Um, I, um, someone want to get that verse because I'm skipping on what that is right now. Um, but that is, a, that is a very good verse because that verse deals with the heart transformation that um, 
happens to people's lives is that you have a heart transformation that Jesus Christ has given you a new heart. He has taken the old way, the old heart. He has taken the heart of stone, it talks about there, and he's given you a new heart, new life. Um, 2 Corinthians, I believe it is 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. There's a heart change. There's a transformation that takes place. And there's never been a transformation. You've never been born again. I think Michael's got that verse. What verse was it Ezekiel again? Ezekiel 36.6. Um, so, yeah, he'll read that verse there. And then he can talk about that if you'd like a little bit, too. Scrolling away. Yeah, good old scrolling. Yeah. That's why we don't use the phone. I'm just teasing. You might as well you can use the phone as much as you want. It took me probably longer to find it on my, in the Bible. Okay, Ezekiel 36, 26. And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove this heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Mm -hmm. That's a powerful passage of him taking the old life, the old way of living, and giving you a new way of living. Do you want to touch on that any bit, Michael, or not? Well, yeah, he's, he's giving, as Caleb said, giving you a new life. He's giving you a desire to want to do what he likes you know like our old heart is just with this world and full of sin and just worldly desires but when you accept Jesus in your heart he'll give you a new heart and you'll have new desires and you want to live out your life to where it's it's good in his eyes absolutely um so yeah so once you received salvation salvation is when you call upon the name of the Lord Jesus, Romans 10, 9, 10. You call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. He gives you salvation. You repent of your sins. You believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection. You shall have eternal life, and you shall have eternal life presently. You shall have new life in the present. Instantaneously, the Holy Spirit will indwell you as a believer, and you shall have new life. You know, so many Christians this day and age are missing the whole point of the gospel. One of the major points of the gospel was this, that you can have a new life in Jesus Christ. You can be saved right now as if you were in the presence of God. And so many Christians are missing that because they don't realize what Jesus has done. He has not just saved you from eternal damnation, but he has saved you right now physically. He has saved you if you were in the presence of Almighty God. Um, so many Christians miss that. And so Michael will... Well, let's, let's keep on going here just for a little bit here. Um, verse 35, here it is. For whoever would save his, save his life will lose it. So he's saying in the text, but for whoever is going to save his life will lose it. Will lose his life. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. So... Is he saying the fact is that you have to put down every single thing, live in, you know, or is he saying the fact, how do I want to phrase this here? I'm trying to think of a good way to phrase it so that people understand it. So, with living your life, it is not the fact that you have to throw everything away, throw away your occupation, throw away your school, throw away everything that you're doing, throw away Every small detail, you throw away your car, throw away your machinery, throw away all that. Is that what he's saying? No. 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 He's not saying that you have to throw everything away. What he is saying is you have to throw away the old life and pick up the new life in Jesus Christ. And that is not, that is an action and the proving out of your salvation, according to James. For James 4 7, do someone want to get that real quick? James 4 7. It's a great verse, um, great verse. And once, once Michael gets that, Mike, Evan, do you have anything to add? Do you want to say anything? Yeah, um, with the whole renewing of the spirit, becoming a new life, that's why I find it very hard to take these quote-unquote Christians today so seriously because to say, oh, yeah, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven, but then you're just witnessing them in real lifetime, and they're showing this complete opposite. They're like, one of those, oh, I'm going to go to church on Sunday and show this, you know, hoorah, godly type of me, but then I'm going to go home and I'm going to sin repeatedly, repeatedly, 
and knowing that you're living in sin and not confessing that and getting it right with God and just doing all of this thinking that oh, it's all okay, you're forgiven, but it, it, there's, no, if there's no salvation there in the first place, even though they may claim it, that's not right. You can't be one of those Sunday Christians that doesn't live their life out like that and shows complete evidence of not being saved. Because they probably are. So, yeah, Evan is starting to preach there. So, once I'll, I'll, I'll just let him have the reins and he can have the rest of the video. Um, I gave you the wrong verse. That one is, therefore, submit yourself to God um, and the devil will flee from you. But you read James 1 22. It's right here, Michael. You can read that. James 1 22. It's at the top of the page. Here is James 1 22. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. There, that was James 1, 22 and 23 there. So yeah, so it says, be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. So he's saying, don't actually, you know, speak the word. Don't actually just share the gospel. Don't actually just share the Bible, share about Jesus and all that. He's saying, live it out. He's saying the true evidence of salvation is how you live your life. Because like Evan was touching on, if you live in the bars, you drink it up, party up, hook up, shack up, any of those types of things, and there's no evidence of salvation, you have not been born again by the grace of the gospel. Because the Holy Spirit of God indwells you as a believer and convicts you of sin. And you shouldn't be able to live with that amount of conviction. No, you should absolutely. Gotta repent of it. Absolutely. Well, some people will say, "Well, Caleb, you know, I just, I've just quenched the spirit over so many years, and it just everything, all that sin, just it doesn't affect me anymore." Well, my Bible says that that sin does affect you, and there should be a conviction if you've been truly born again. There, the Holy Spirit should convict you of your sin so much that you need to repent of it, that you need to get right. The Holy Spirit wants you to live right before Him. He wants you to live holy. Somebody want to get First Peter five, uh, no, First Peter, chapter one, eleven through sixteen, I believe it is. Someone want to get that? Um, and that that's a great passage. Great passage. Um, Michael, you got anything to add here, real quick? Um, going back to how you just are living out Christ in your life, that's that's what people look for. They look to see what you're doing. And if you're just like, let's say you're in a situation where it's, well, it's not a good situation, like there's people swearing or people making bad jokes, you just, you, you gotta, you can't laugh with them. You gotta, you gotta show Christ through you, whether it be just leaving that situation or telling them like, you know, this, this can't, this is like, it's not funny. You, it's just not good, you know. Yeah, I believe there's. passage in the Old Testament, maybe it's a proverb or something but like that, but it's, it, I think it's actually multiple times. I believe Galatians 5 also touches on it, but do not, um, do not have crude joking. And what a shame it is in our day and age that we see all these supposed Christians and their mouths are everything is a cuss word, F-bomb, you know, F this, F that, and they say, well, I go to church on Sunday, I'm all right. But the problem is, the Bible says, eh, do not have that crude joking. And it talks about that in Galatians, where the people will get worse and worse. And I have to say one thing, and then Michael can, or Evan can jump on that too, is that the movies that are out there, the social media, the TikTok, all those videos, and it's just a shame what we have allowed in the American church. So many people watch so many movies that have no sense to them you know if i'm gonna watch a movie that involves shooting it has to actually make sense of why they're doing it not just this endless shoot them up that's why i do i do actually like war movies and stuff like that but if it's just endless shooting there's a problem you know if they because what i'm gonna just preach for a little bit what that is showing is a heart attitude that you are desiring to see people killed yeah 
it's uh, it's just not it's not teaching you what you should be getting taught you know and also like all the swearing in movies and videos or music it's it's just unnecessary and if you're truly saved you you should not be partaking in that stuff you shouldn't be watching it should actually make you upset that's like well how why would they do this you know it may be like a good a good base movie but you know you add all that stuff in it's just what's the point it shows what this world really is yeah and it's a it's a real shame you know to see to go to movies now or you put on a movie or something you know it's just it just it angers me that we allow so much of so much swearing and so much sexual immorality in our lives on the movies and TV shows because, you know, it's just, it's F-bomb after F-bomb. And it seems like, well, you know, people say, well, that just doesn't face me here and there. But I'll tell you this, you hearing that may not phase you, but guess what? If you've been a born-again qu- Christian, that's quenching the spirit. Yeah, and it, with my opinions on that, just hearing that, it, after so long, it just almost hurts your ears, if that makes sense. Yeah. But uh, also, like a personal experience here, you know, you're walking among people and you're explaining and then you just have like friends that are swearing. And you're like, well, if you call yourselves Christians, why are you doing that? And they're like, well, it's not in the Bible. That God doesn't say you can't use F-bombs or all that. I'm like, okay, it's, you got to use common sense here. I mean, he might not directly say that, but is that a word of encouragement? Is that used to build anybody up? Is that Absolutely. anything else? No, it's not. Don't say, well, I'm not, I'm not using it to bring somebody down. It's just in casual conversation. I'm like, how far have you fallen to use that in language in casual conversation? Mm-hmm. We have a whole other English language that you can use. Yeah. There's pr- plenty of replacements. It's sad. Yeah, the, the cursing is talked about you know it's not directly does not directly say but what it does directly say is that you should not be cursing or swearing it i know people will say well he's meaning a different curse he's meaning a different swearing but i'm gonna have michael or evan read first peter 11 through 16 i believe it is and if i'm wrong we'll have to find it so this is starting in 11 inquiring what person or time the spirit of Christ in them was indicating when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the subsequent glories. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves, but you and the things that they have been announced to you through those who preach the good news to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, Set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Yep, that was, that was a passage. Um, and you read through 16? Uh, this would be 16. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Yep. It was 13 through 16, so I got Evan started a little early, so we got a little bit more context. But he's telling the people that you're supposed to be holy, for I am holy. Leviticus 20, 26 tells us, For you shall be a holy people to me, for I, the Lord, am holy, and have separated you from the peoples. And people say, well, Caleb, that was written to the Israelite people. But the context is the same because it's quoted in First Peter also. It's saying, you shall be obedient children, you shall love holy, for I am holy. And living in holiness living in repentance that's what it is it's turning from your sin it's getting right with god it's confessing your sin it's saying jesus save me and saying jesus burn out this sin in my life with your glory that was been one of my prayers you know i've been praying that that because i've been watching this pastor he's been preaching on the glory of god a lot it's just like if i you know and the other thing is you know isaiah 6 also talks about that you know we should you know isaiah saw the holiness of god and it's just woe is me for i'm undone but yeah it's a crime, it's a shame, because we have a world, and we have Christianity, and we want them to intermix. Mm-hmm. We want them to, that's what these so many preachers want these days, is we, well, we cannot collide with the world, because then they won't come to church. 
that's, that, that's just not right. Because if you just keep going along with this world, or this world is just going, it's getting worse every day. And if you're bringing a church into that and trying to make your church look like that, it's just not going to work out. You're just, you're going to be teaching the wrong things and no one's going to know what they truly should know. Yeah. As Jason said not too long ago, um, it should be like this. The church should be everywhere in the state, in politics and all that, because they're supposed to be modeled after what Christ modeled. But the state, they need to stay out of the church. They need to obey and listen to what God has to say, and that's how they got to run it. And that's just not yep. not clear enough. Yep. So, you know, I just thought of an analogy that's pretty good. Is that do you do you do you is if you were trying to clean something up, do you get dirty to try to clean up the dirty thing? Nope. Do you, that just doesn't make any sense because the church is saying, well, to not collide with the world. I have to get dirty to clean the world up. That don't work. No. Jesus Christ took our sins upon himself because he was spotless. He was clean. He was perfectly holy. He took the sins of the world upon him, and he died for our sins, and he rose again from the grave, defeating sins, defeating death. And the fact is that the world, thinking the church thinking that they have to get dirty to clean up the world, it doesn't work out. Jesus Christ has already paved the way, and the way is to tell them straight what the gospel is. Mm -hmm. Straight what the gospel is. You don't always need to sugarcoat it. Sometimes you just got to tell them. Mm -hmm. and they'll accept it or they won't. Yep. But you got to try. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of find it funny sometimes that, you know, I've shared the, I've shared gospel to people some, not enough, not as much as I should. I should share the gospel way more than I but I find it interesting that every, you know, I'll share the gospel, I'll tell someone about it, and just just about every time somebody will, that I'm telling the person that I told, you know, talking to some person, believer, or whatever, and they will tell me that I did it wrong, that I shared the gospel wrong, I said it wrong, I was too harsh, I was too much. I was like, what in the world? You, so am I just not supposed to say anything? If I say it wrong, I don't get it. But, you know, a lot of times the people that are telling you how to share the gospel are the ones that never actually shared the gospel. Mm -hmm. yeah. But living out the gospel is the most important thing. You guys can go a little bit more on that and just touch up a little bit more because I think you guys have a few more things to share. Well, I'd just like to uh, give my experiences and talk about them in the uh, construction trade, you know, carpentry and all, and just kind of like what I'm, you know, exposed to going back to like the swearing and all this other stuff is, well, I'm, I'm constantly exposed to it because that's just like the way it is. And, you know, I don't discourage anyone who's watching or going to be listening to this. If you want to do carpentry, do carpentry. But you need to know what you're going into and you need to know how to deal with it. And uh, I'd, I'd say how I'm currently dealing with it is, you know, you're always going to have people swearing, but you got to keep yourself out of those situations. There are good people in this world that, you know, don't always just like to drop the F-bomb all the time. You got to surround yourself with them or just remove yourself from the situation if you don't have anywhere to go or, you know, if there's bad music being played, well, maybe have your own music in earbuds, you know, and get yourself away from there. And because if you just stand there and listen to it and you say well it's not going to bother me it will end up bothering you and it will end up getting to you and then you'll kind of just go into anyone else's path yep, yep. it's we become complacent and when we become complacent is when we just gave up our gave up our sin um yeah the thing that people christians don't realize too is the world watches you like a hawk they do. Very they true. They watch you like a hawk. They want to watch you misstep, but they also watch if you don't misstep. And I'm not saying that if you ever misstep, you blown up, you know, whatever your witness or whatever. No, that's not at all. One thing that will show the world is show is repentance. You know, a Christian repenting of their sins. That's going to be an amazing witness to the world because they don't see that. No. But um, also, I'll say this is that, you know, with with American Christianity and how far we've gone from the biblical truth, 
how far we've gone. Our lives are such a distortion of what Christianity in the Bible looks actually is supposed to be. Biblical Christianity, American Christianity is such a distortion from biblical Christianity because we have allowed so many things to creep into the churches and we mm-hmm. care about sound production, we care about how it looks, the video, the audio, and I do care about that stuff too, so maybe I'm wrong. But we care about all these small details, the carpet's got to be just right, the pew's got to be just padded just right, and yet in the pulpits we're not worried. The, it's the preaching of God's word that saves sinners. It's a proclaiming, Romans 10, 17, so faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That is how a sinner gets saved, is by the word of God, by the conviction of the Holy Ghost. That is what we're missing in the American church. We are not missing, we're not missing production Christianity. Production Christianity is what has killed, um, what has killed biblical Christianity. But with that, is that we have to get back to reverencing the Holy Ghost, reverencing the Bible. We have lost such a reverence. I have lost such a reverence for God. I allow way too many things in my life. I allow too much of this, too much of that. And it's like, why am I doing that when the Bible's right there? You know, why am I, why am I wasting my time? My most valuable asset is my time. And I think too many of us, especially me, I can preach on myself a lot. We just waste too much time in life. And I think Evan was going to have something to add, weren't you? Or- well, I was just going to say another thing for all you listeners out there. If you're going back to what Caleb mentioned about just preaching, if you're leaving a message and you're just like, that was great. I Great message to the pastor, everything. And you're leaving there without something that is just weighing on you or something that you're like, I need to apply this more. You need to maybe read more into the Bible or have a good conversation with your pastor or maybe find a different church to go to because it should always be something that's, you know, we're not perfect. There should be something that's picking at us that there, a preacher is called to uh, share the word, to teach us. There should be something that's just, not quite sitting right in your own life. Yeah, pull up 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, Evan, and then we'll read that. And as that's happening, Michael, you got any final thoughts for us? Um, Back to the church. The stuff which should start with kids. You know, the, the family, the parents should teach their kids the right and what's good, the difference between right and wrong. And then that should, the church should help them with that. That's why there's baby dedications. You know, it's, an uh, agreement between the family and the church to help raise the kid in the right way, in the the godly way. And uh, it's it's the same in, like, you know, you start with the kid, you have the parents teaching the kid, well, then the kid gets sent off to school if they go to public school. And then after, you know, middle, elementary, middle school, high school, then go into college, those areas in their life, those people are also responsible for telling them what's good and in today's day and age that's just not happening you know you're everything everything with the religion is taken out of school you can't even do the pledge of allegiance I remember in a few years while I was in school we could do that but you can't do that anymore and it's just it's just sad to see you know how all this is and everything's just so acceptable it's like right now in college is you can do anything and it's just it's just not right. You should, there should be values there, and there just isn't any values. Yep, absolutely. The thing that American, the American church needs is a bunch of men and a bunch of women with a rod iron backbone and a set of leather lungs to call this culture back to Jesus Christ. Because what? Because the shame on these pastors and these preachers that claim to preach the gospel but never preach on repentance. You think you're going to win a soul but never say you need to repent of your sins? Mm -hmm. You think you're going to win a soul and never preach on hell? My goodness, you know, what was the main message that Jesus Christ preached was that he is the way, he is the doorway, he is the one that leads to the Father. There is no other way. He is, it's only through Jesus Christ, John 14, 6, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. Another thing Jesus preached on, he preached on three times more, he preached three times more on hell than he ever did on heaven. Because the most important message 
is that people need to get right with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, you can preach on heaven, you can preach on the things of God, these all nice things, you know, cotton candy sermons and rainbows and all that, and you'll never win a sinner because the problem is you're missing the whole message. Mm -hmm. All right, so final point, Evan's going to read, and then we'll just go right back through it once, see if they got anything more to add, and then we'll be done. Second Timothy 3, 16 and 17. 3, 16 and 17. So here's 16. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Um, yes, absolutely. Second Timothy 3, 16 through 17. Other translations will say, um, how does that go now? All scripture is given by the inspiration of God's prophet for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That word correction, the word of God is supposed to correct you. It's supposed to reproof you. And it's supposed to give you instructions to live in righteousness. It is so powerful. The word of God is the most powerful book on the planet, the most important book on the planet. And we've thrown it to the side yep. like it's dung on a hill. And that, that would be perfect for I think a school is like school is there to teach you and it's like well that verse just says the word is God is there to teach you mm -hmm. why don't you maybe try using that in the school and see see where it gets you see what it does mm -hmm. well, yeah. that that may be a suggestion yep the only way to fix America is by the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ it's the only way is there any other any other way you can't get enough legislation to fix our problems and I encourage, if you're in school, high school, college, wherever, and if you're interested, go talk to someone. Go search people out and or maybe start doing a Bible study or go to an existing Bible study that's good and has solid backing by a church. I encourage you to do that. If you have questions, ask people. Yep. Final thing that I'm going to do, as usual, as I pretty much do on every video, but every video, if you've never been born again by the grace of the gospel, I'd ask you today, I'd ask you today that you were repent of your sins. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So we're all a sinner, and all, we're all sinners, and we all deserve to be on the backside of hell, including me. We all deserve to be in hell right now. But by the grace of God, there is eternal life. Romans 10, 9, 10, because if you confess with the mouth that Jesus is the Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Mm -hmm. For at the heart one believes and is justified. With the mouth one confesses and is saved. Romans 10, 13, for everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of God, through the word of God, you shall be saved. So you, what do you have to do to be saved? It's not a prayer that you pray. You can receive salvation by a prayer, and that is a prayer that you must pray. And the prayer can be just as simple as this, as you crying out to Jesus Christ to save you from your sins. You repent of your sin. You believe in the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. And the Holy Spirit of God will give you eternal life. The Holy Spirit of God will come to and dwell in you. So if you ever do actually pray that prayer, I'd love to for you to send me an email and let me know about it, because I'd love for that. That'd be amazing. Um, any updates this week? Um, Sing Saw's Church, 9.30 is blast. 10.30, D.R. Harrison is preaching the Word of God. Uh, 4 o'clock is blast at Calvary. 5 o'clock, D.R. Harrison's preaching the Word of God. I'm excited to see him again. It's going to be a powerful weekend of hearing D.R. Harrison preach. Um, we have a sweatshirt that is um, two, actually, two different brands of sweatshirts that are coming out. Because I got one that is a cheaper and I got one that is really good quality. And if you want to have information on the sweatshirt, send, shoot me a text or shoot me an email. My email is always down below, and so is the Maverick Truth Radio email. Um, I will probably be posting the sweatshirts here this afternoon, so then people can start messaging me if they want one or don't want one, whatever. It don't really matter. Um, I'm not upcharging any bit. I'm just wanting people to get some sweatshirts. So there's no, there, we're not profiting in any way. Um, I might, add, I'll probably add sales tax though afterwards. <laughs> so I don't have to cover all the sales tax. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Thank you again, Evan, for being on the podcast. Thank you, Michael, for being on the podcast. Like, share, subscribe. See you guys next time. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, 
Send me an email, and if it's a hate email, I usually just read it, and I'll never respond. So if it's going to be a hate email, just don't even send it.